Hello, my name is Simon Bingham, and this is uh, one of my videos on opening shortest path first. And I'm just going to very quickly reiterate some of the basics here. So, um, where do you need a routing protocol? Well, you need a routing pro pro protocol where you have a number of interconnected routers, and it is not feasible to use static routes to tell each router how to get to every other network. And you'll find that very quickly becomes, you know, not a realistic proposition. Um, open shortest path first is a standard-based protocol. So, and and to, to be quite honest with you, it's probably the well, the world's most popular um, interior gateway pr protocol. Um, now, what does how does OSPF work? Well, OSPF is is a is a link state protocol. And what that really means is that OSPF creates a mental map of the entire net network, um, and then uses that map in order to calculate the best um, the best next hop to use. Um, in order to send the traffic, because this is what all this is about. Really, it's all about creating a, a routing table and populating it with the best next hop, how to to get to everywhere that the protocol is is actually considering. So um, this format is then processed using something called Deitschka's al algorithm or Deitschka's shortest pass first algorithm, um, which is then run to calculate um, where to, where to send the traffic to. Now, slightly unusually from these videos, I'm actually going to launch straight into that algorithm. And this is because I found that when I was, I've come across this, you know, I've had to study OSPF several times for all manner of exams, and, and a lot of the aspects of it have never really stuck with me. You just kind of learn them by rote because you have to. And it wasn't until I read the RFC and I started reading about directed graphs, it really all clicked for me, and I was, you know, I learned knowledge there that just seems to stay. So I hope you have the same experience, really. So what I'm going to do is just show you what a directed graph is and how Deutschka's algorithm works. So, what we really what a, what a directed graph is is what you or I would think of as a bit like a network di diagram, but it's not really a network diagram. Um, it's what the mathematicians call vertices and edges. Now, I've given the the vertices here router router numbers, and I've given the edges lines. Um, but this could just as easily be be anything. It could be you know uh, the, the 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 values that a sat nav uses to get from one place to another, or 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 all sorts of things. You know, and any, anything you can think of where you need to calculate the you know, the best route across, in effect, a kind of map um, from one place to another. Deutschka's algorithm will help you with this. Now, what I'm going to show you here is um, I'm basically going to show you how how it actually calculates, and I'm going to run you through 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 the process. So, right, I've drawn out a little sort of example network here with some values on it. And, okay, it's fairly simple, and you or I, you know, as human beings, will probably work that out fairly quick, quickly. But the point is, you know, if you scale to a network with, you know, far more routers, all of a sudden the human me method doesn't work, and you need some kind of systematic algorithm for working out what is the best route from one place to another. So let's, let's just run through how Deutsch's algorithm works. Well, first of all, we consider our star starting point. In this case, we're going to be considering R1 as our starting point, and we're going to ca calculate the best route to every single place on this network. So, what is the cost to R1? Well, it's currently zero, and we're not considering any of the others. So, in this case, R1 is the winner. So, what we're that now going to consider, we're going to consider everything that R1 can reach and try and work out what is the best next. And in a way, you're kind of cal calculating, you know, in order, how far is everything away from R1. And it'll just become clearer as I show you this. So, let's consider, we don't consider this anymore, because we've already already um, considered this. What's the what's the cost to R2? Well, we can clearly see it's 5. And I'm going to put a little note in here to say it's fire R1. So, in effect, we're our own next hop. What about R3? What's, what's the cost to R3? Well, it's 12. Well, no, let's say it's R1. R4, well, it's 8. And again, R1. And we can't reach um, R5 di directly from R1, so we don't consider it. So, what's our winner here? Our winner is R2. So, R2 becomes the next thing we consider. So, in a way, we're ticking off this and we're ticking off this. So, we won't be considering these anymore. So, this is not relevant. And this is not relevant either. Now we consider the world according to R2 now, 
but we can sit we, we leave these values here so what we do is we if, I, uh, if we consider what is the best path to r3 from r2 now in a way r2 already has a weighting of five here so anything anything we get to includes that you know includes this cost here so we say how do we get to r3 what well, what what's sorry What's the what's the path? What's the total distance to R three? Well, it's obviously is ten. We can see that. So right in ten. Now ten does beat what we had as our existing one. So we put it in here, but only if it beats it. So we do ten, and obviously it's via R two. So put a little R two here. I'll we'll note in there. Now, what about reaching R four from from R two? Well, we can't we can't do that because it's two hops away. So we don't consider it so we can't do it so the value stays the same sorry so it is 8 and it is still via R1 now what about R5 can we reach R5 from R2 yes we can and it's a total path cost a total cost of 15 the 5 plus the 10 along that link there everything about that and that and it is of course via R2 now, what's our winner here? What's our lowest cost? It's actually the R4 value wins because we brought that one down. Right, so now we consider R4. So we don't consider this and we don't consider this. Now we're looking at the world according to R4. So we're looking at what can this reach directly connected and what, and what are its costs. So it's R3 the next uh, we have a link cost link of 10 going up there plus the plus the 8 just here so this this 8 plus this 10 gives 18 but hang on that doesn't beat that so if it, so if it isn't better it's just ignored and the, and the previous value is still used so that's still uh, R2 now what about R4 we're already on R4 so we're not considering that one and we are um, what about R5? We have a cost of 8 plus 3 along the bottom, so that gives us um, 11. Which obviously, beats the previous value that we had, and what was this now changes to R4. So, what, what winner do we have here? We have the winner is R3. And by the way, we're not considering that anymore, and we won't be considering that anymore. So, we go on to R3. Now we're, now we're going to consider the world according to R3. So we don't consider those because they've already been done. We can't consider the R3 to R3. Um, R4 we've already done as well. So we now consider R4 to R5 because that's the only thing left to consider. So we go R sorry R3 to R5. R3 to R5 is 8 plus uh, 10 because that's along here. And in effect. Um, in effect, that's um, this this one here plus this one plus this one, which gives us a value of 18. Does 18 beat what we already have? No, it doesn't. So actually, this stays as the winner. So we get R4. R4. So now we have R5, and that's that. so. So right. Now we've completed this process and there's nothing else to consider, how does that give us a routing table? Well, let me show you. So now R1 obviously is to itself, so that isn't really that doesn't really count. So R2. Well, how do we get to R2? To get to R2, we need a next hop of, and we go along here. The winner was the winner previously from here. was this one here. Let me just draw these winners in actually because it'll make it a bit clearer. Now I'm just going to say I'm just going to highlight the winners here so we can you know it makes it more evident what we're talking about here. So before the value of 5 won and became the next thing that we considered. Over here the value of R4 won and that became the next thing we considered. Over here the next thing that won was the value of R3 which became the next thing we considered and here the value of R5 became the next thing we considered 
and one naturally. So, how does that help us work out the um, the routing table? Well, how do we get to R two was the next winner? Well, if we look at what R two had as its next hop, it meant that um, it said here we had here R one, so it was a di directly connected. So R two, well, it's directly connected, so it has a next hop of R two. So we don't really need to consider anything else. Now what about um, R4 then? How do we get to R4? So R4 again, we see it was var R1 um, here. So you can see that the value here, R1. So that means the next hop is again, it's just directly connected. So we have a natural next hop of R4. So how about R3? Well, this is interesting because look, actually, we don't. Even though it's directly connected, we can see that the best hop that we had for it was actually via R2. We just look uh, just here. We can see that it's via R2. So actually, the next hop for R3. So R3's next hop is R2. So it's saying if you need to get to R3. If you need to get to R3, you first need to go to here. And then what about R5? So if we need to go to R5, the next hop is, and if we look, we noted it before, that was actually R4 we were going from. So this is interesting. So now we've got some information basically, which you know it may seem long-winded the way we've gone, gone through that but you know this gives you an idea of the mathematical and systematic approach um, an algorithm can take in order to give give you in effect um, the values that go into a routing ta table so this in effect are this here are the values that Deutsch's algorithm would give back if you like to the router you know we these are the values we would put in the routing ta table so you know it's a simple process now to work out what the next hop is for in order to reach all of these Des destinations. Now this highlights an interesting point actually. Um, routing tables always only, obviously only, only ever talk usually, uh, well um, there are some exceptions but usually you're talking about the next hop. So what's important then is that no matter what perspective you calculate this routing table from it's quite important this map is the same. Now why is that? That's because if we influence one of these routing ta tables to have different values in the routing table, what could happen? Well, this router could be sending a packet in this direction saying, well, my next hop for R5 is, is, is in this direction. And this could be saying, okay, well, the next route, the next way to R5 is down here. Well, if we influence what OSPF puts in the routing table, we could actually have a situation where if for example we, we you know we, we subverted OSPF in some way and R3 didn't agree on the same map and it had a lower value here, say I don't know a two, it could end up you could end up with a circumstance and it doesn't mathematically work out here, but you could end up with a circumstance where R3 decide, oh no, I think the way to R5 is down here. And R1 would go, okay I've got that packet, now it's up here, and you could end up with routing loops. So this highlights why it's actually important for a protocol such as OSPF to actually have exactly the same map or in OSPF terms exactly the same database on all the routers which are basically processing you know are processing this algorithm and in OSPF we call it an area um, okay that's that's it really and this gives you, it just really gives you a basis you can understand now that you know the, the, the main job really of OSPF is to create this map um, and the, 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 LA, the LSAs and all of it we'll talk about in late, later videos really are just about creating this this identical picture all over this network so that then you, you know, then the mathematics can then be run on it and all the next hops can be calculated. Okay, thank you very much.